I want my freedom of communication um, in the real world as much as I want that on the internet. You studied astrophysics and philosophy. When was your first contact with the computer and why did you become fascinated by them? My first contact with computer actually comes from playing chess. I was playing in the chess team on our school. Um, so we had uh, uh, competitions, chess competitions with other schools. And one day a teacher told me that he has a machine that can play chess. And from that very moment I couldn't stop touching the computer before I understood how these chess program work. And how would you define internet freedom? First of all, it's the distinction between real life and internet. When it comes down to rights, it's not different. I want freedom of speech here in the physical world as much as I do want to have freedom of speech uh, in, the, in the virtual world. The change is that we are not in control of the internet, so we do not know what happens on the internet. So our communication gets censored, it got intercepted, it got uh, 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 control and of course you have to fight for your right to talk and, and, and to give the free speech on the internet differently than you have to do in real life because in the real life you can sit, stand down in a, in a, in a, in a, in a public space have to say what you want to want to say hear what you want to hear uh, that's not the same on the internet so we have to take more care of our internet rights and internet freedoms I mean just three words is freedom of information freedom of communication and informational self-determination. Would you advise young people to engage in online activism or hacktivism? In what ways could they express it? I know quite a lot of people that, for example, consider uh, DDoS events against companies that treat their workforce bad or try to rip off their customers as some kind of digital protest in like a physical sit-in uh, in the real world. So where you do not damaging harm, nothing that persists. Uh, I mean, you, you block access, for example, to server. That's what DDoS is all about. It's, it's a non-violent uh, digital direct action that people can execute. These are not the important fights for rights uh, we actually do. See, for example, the Valhalla Foundation supports projects that bring free Wi-Fi to refugee homes. Um, the, the German regulations on refugees, for example, say that whoever comes here to Germany, of course he has a certain set of rights, maybe to asylum even, um, but it says as long as this decision is not made, make his stay as uncomfortable as possible. Don't encourage these people to be here which means they are only provided with the very bare minimum of surviving, like food, drink, shelter. So what we do is setting up an infrastructure we finance to give refugees access to information flow, to communicate back with their families back in Syria uh, uh, or wherever they come from. You were involved or are still involved in the Chaos Computer Club. Could you talk about the organization's ethics? For me, being CCC, Chaos Computer Club means to do the things we promote. And these are the things I told you before, like freedom of information, uh, informational self-determination, freedom of communication. But now my focus is on doing work for the Valholland Stiftung. Valholland was one of the founders of the KS Computer Club. Uh, and when he died early in 2001, we made up this foundation to promote his ideas, like anonymity networks, like the fight against voting computers, like the support for WikiLeaks, because that's the only thing we have to defend our freedom of information. As you mentioned, a big supporter of WikiLeaks. As we know today, the National Security Agency, the NSA, was buying on uh, Merkel. Uh, but what about the other way around? So, uh, about the BND spying on other persons or other countries? Can you say something about that? What I think is what they are doing is morally wrong, which is much stronger than uh, employing some laws or regulations which are always screwed in the end, right? Uh, so if we, if we want to end this kind of, of behavior of these, of these institutions, we have to get rid of them. Because it's not in their mindset to do anything else than collecting data on all of us. Do you think that there, are, that there are any ethics in hacking? If you neglect the importance and the authority of law, uh, the only way to know if you're doing wrong or doing right is by having your own ethics. 
So you must know what's wrong and right. Don't let others tell you what's wrong and right. Trust yourself. Uh, and of course, the hacker ethics is this kind of moral barrier or moral moral guidelines. Uh, we do our actions along. So if it's if it's correct or if it's if it's if it's right by the hacker ethics, it's probably really right to do. Not always, but most of the time. But in the end, it's always you. You have to decide what is right and what is wrong. Nobody can take that decision away from you. With the advent of the internet, basically every one of us is affected by copyright in our daily life, all the time.